Can you see uh, my screen? Uh, so it should be yes. um, half the screen will be a terminal, half of the screen will be a, um, a website. <laughs> so that's kind of, uh, I envision that uh, our exercise will go through today and also potentially tomorrow. So uh, if you go to the uh, Jetscape uh, GitHub repository, uh, we'll first start with uh, basically the instructions which is written in this uh, summer school 2021. So we want to uh, basically uh, open that. And then we go to today will be the hydro sessions in July 21st. And then we go to the hydro session after that. And then uh, what I really want is trying to, you have a, a kind of a, a way now open that you have, you can see this readme uh, in this hydro session, which essentially is the, uh, the, the, the notes, uh, the, the walkthrough notes that you, you can uh, use uh, to, to go through uh, the exercise with me today. So this will be, uh, and also we will only go through the first exercise today and then there's a following few that will go through tomorrow in the, in the uh, tomorrow's two hour session. And today is mainly just uh, try to set up the, uh, the whole, uh, the whole uh, exercise simulations so that you get a little bit familiar about the uh, setup and then, uh, and then we can smoothly go through uh, tomorrow or talk about more physics uh, tomorrow with the physics modules. So let me, um, so let me stop here once, uh, maybe you can get a poll that everybody is ready in this uh, kind of setup. Also on the, le on the left hand side, we want to go to the, uh, we want to go to the, uh, go to the jet, uh, sorry. Uh, somehow I cannot type. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, somehow the first one doesn't work. <laughs> so let me go to the Jetscape Docker where you have uh, basically uh, your Jetscape. Uh, let me make it bigger. So we have the Jetscape folder and then also the summer school folder. Is the is the size okay on the terminal that you can see clearly the the text? To me, it looks good. Yeah. Um, so you you mentioned something about a poll. I am not sure I can do this. I don't see this option here right now. Uh, what do you mean? Um, because you were saying something about making a poll if everybody's ready ready or so, but I can't. I, oh, I'm you mean that the, the 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 poll on the on the Zoom? Yeah. Like the, yeah. I mean, that was, if you wanted to do that, I don't know how to. Okay, <laughs> anyway, so let, let, let's just, uh, let's assume that uh, it's, it's now uh, current in this case. Um, so so, uh, so first, first is just to start that, uh, um, start with a, 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 a Docker container, with a new Docker container that uh, different, slightly different from, the, uh, from your, what you had on Monday. That has this minus p uh, 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 option here, which uh, give us uh, the access of the Jupyter notebook. So if you are not familiar with Jupyter notebook, that's also fine. But uh, it will be nice uh, to have Jupyter notebook uh, uh, abilities in this in this case. So uh, if you are doing uh, using Mac, you can just copy paste this uh, this command uh, to your terminal and then start uh, a, a Docker container. And if you are on the Linux, you can use the, the one lower here. And, uh, and uh, we have the additional minus minus RM is basically saying that if you quit the current container, the container will be automatically deleted so that uh, you will not uh, uh, stay in, the, in, the, in, your, in your computer. So if you want to do uh, keep your container status, you don't need, uh, then you can take out the RM. But for me, it's, I think I usually find the, having this RM is usually uh, helpful because I don't want to accidentally generate too many Docker containers that I don't need after the session. So once you are in the Docker container, one thing you need to look at is that uh, the, your username become just get user. 
So that's one of the indications that you are inside the Docker container. Uh, otherwise, you will be still in the in your regular uh, environment. So uh, with this, we'll go to Jescape, where uh, where things are here, and then we'll first the task to do is to build Jescape with music and ISS potentially together when we when we do the build. So that's similar to the exercise you have been you have done on Monday and Tuesday. The first is that you need to make sure that uh, in the external package, you have the uh, music and ISS code download. So if you go to the external package, you need to make sure that uh, you have these uh, two codes uh, directories uh, uh, present here. So probably this let me do a color to make it more obvious. <clears throat> so these two folders need to be there. Uh, if they are not there, you can use the get music .shell and get the ISS .shell to to download them. And then once you have this uh, in here, then you can go back to the uh, JSK folder, go to a build folder if you have. Uh, so and then uh, you can start to build it. So um, yeah, let me, let me just delete everything and then build from scratch uh, together with you. If you have uh, done this build and with the music and IS turn on, uh, you can you can you can just don't do you don't need you, you don't need to do it if you already do it, you already compile with these two uh, switch turn on. But uh, let me just uh, uh, for the for the presence uh, for the presentation, I just uh, uh, let me just do this. Uh, as example, so basically just do CMake with these two switch on. And then do make J4 to start compile. So it will just take uh, a few uh, few minutes to compile the code. So while compiling, if, if you have still have any questions, you can still right now ask. It may take uh, a few minutes uh, for the compile to finish. Or if you have any questions about the instructions uh, uh, just before this part. So would it be good at this point that people post when their compilation is ready or so, or when they're ready to go? Or is it not so crucial? And then in the meantime, change the mouse back. It's like 
48 percent. It's almost halfway there. <laughs> so take a take a few minutes to compile if you want to recompile from fresh. Do we know how how people are doing in terms of this step? Yeah, that was my question. Maybe we can just um, so the people who already made made it to through the compilation. Maybe you can just post in the reactions under directions in uh, Slack uh, the, with the green. Yeah, you can you can put a when yeah, you're user, user, like, when you're there. I think that mm -hmm. might uh, be helpful mm -hmm. to know who are, who is at this step. So just uh, also you can do on the on the on the Zoom. Uh, you can also post the uh, in the emoji or something. You can, you can just ask people perhaps to raise their hand or yeah, I think I just started no, just, just, there's, a, there's a check mark you can you can click, I think, on the zoom. Yes, yeah, that's the zoom check mark. Yeah. Yes, the screen check mark. Mm -hmm. So some people are already posting this, so there's mm -hmm. the first few are getting ready. So <laughs> yeah, I just tried to be slow that uh, that hope hopefully I get all most of you here. <laughs> yeah. So if you already done um, Good job and uh, just be patient. It's be good. Yeah, I think the only point is with the check mark that it disappears after a moment. So I guess if we want something mm -hmm. more stable, we have to use the hands, mm -hmm. even if it's not really the correct sign. Yeah, so maybe at the moment we just do it with the with hands up if you if you are ready. So that we can see how the fraction develops. And if you have questions or problems, just write in the Slack channel. There's technical support available mm -hmm. there. So there's one question asking mm -hmm. if it's okay to use the Docker container from yesterday if someone has ISS and music configured. Yeah, it's okay. So if, if you already have them uh, built on, so if you have this uh, switch turned on already from yesterday, you can just continue to use the Docker container yesterday. Uh, the only thing that uh, you might be missing is that uh, um, you might don't have this uh, uh, port for your browser so that uh, you might not be able to open the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, but that's okay uh, because I also have uh, a direct Python script to, to, for you to use to make uh, uh, plots so that you don't have to go to the Jupyter Notebook. But Jupyter Notebook is uh, somewhat uh, a, a optional uh, interface that's a little bit nicer to, to just visually see the graph uh, directly. Otherwise, you would just need to uh, run the Python script and then open the PDF uh, from that folder, which, which I will explain in a, in a short amount of time once the code is finished compiled. And also, if you already compiled this, you can uh, just uh, build, a, you can just create another Docker container. You don't have to recompile it, uh, the code. Uh, you can just use a new Docker container with this option on. That's also uh, uh, okay. So we have eight people who are done. So I think mm -hmm. this is. Yeah, well, still okay, seven percent to go. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, you sorry. it also still takes some time. So <laughs> yeah, ten participants, yes. so we're getting there, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now there are more finishing, so. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, don't worry. So we have still have about 40 minutes until the next session. And uh, the exercise we'll do today is uh, pretty simple. Mostly just help you to set up the, the, the framework uh, ready for tomorrow. Okay, my side is done. So, so once you have uh, done this, uh, you should uh, see there's a, a executable, say like the one just gave, as, as you have seen so far before. And uh, um, this will be the directory uh, content I have uh, from the view directory. Uh, one thing we need to do uh, once you finish compile is this last line trying to uh, copy all the uh, essential scripts that we need for this session uh, uh, to, to the local directory so that we can directly use them using these scripts uh, without, you know, without uh, exercise, exercise, uh, exercise the, the school folder anymore. Mm -hmm. So once you have uh, copied that, you will have additional folder called hydro session folder. Um, in your in your build folder. So that basically uh, concludes uh, the whole setup we need to have. Compile the code with music and ISS and uh, have the scripts uh, ready in place uh, for our first test run. So at the moment, 11 people indicate that they're ready. We have 57 in the session. So maybe some of the others just thought they were ready yeah, or me... before. So maybe you can just... Uh... Yeah, let me maybe wait till 25 and then uh, and then start start a test run. Just one one minute. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, now the number is raising again. So. Mm -hmm. So please, even if you clicked some button before, just raise your hand at the moment so we can see how many have the setup completed. Okay, uh, I think uh, I can now uh, start uh, the explaining about the test run. So, um, so I put some emoji because I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball. So, uh, so this will indicate the level of the difficulties of the exercise. So we'll start with the simple one, which is the lowest level. <clears throat> so then you go to Super Saiyan or something tomorrow. So, um, so what we want to do is uh, inside this build folder, um, we will run uh, basically a, a, uh, a XML file that uh, actually help us to run music. So let's first take a look at uh, the XML file before you run the code. John, so can I interrupt basically... you a second? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah. I just want to make sure, so Jessica and McGill uh, mm -hmm. had some issues and I'm wondering if other people have the same issue. Um, I don't know, Jessica, if you want to summarize what's the status right now of your issue. I'm having like a whole bunch of issues. This Docker container business is like not really working for my computer. Every time I try to like run the Docker, the Docker, it says it's already exists. And then I delete it. And then it brings me to a Docker that has nothing inside it. Um, and I keep like going in a loop. Mm. So if you have this, uh, um, usually usually the complaint is that you have the same name of your Docker container before that will complain that the container is exist. Um, so if you use this JS Hydro session, some, most of the time you should not have one. Uh, I think uh, the name from uh, Monday session will be different. So that would be help you to fix it. So usually this part of the command will actually link your local folder, like uh, your, your JScape uh, folder to, to, the, to the one inside the Docker container. 
so that you can actually see the same directory when you enter the whole container as your your computer where you compute your map to. Uh, that's all I think I can help you for now. Uh, not seeing the uh, the actual uh, errors uh, on the screen. Probably maybe one of the TA you can help Jessica at some point offline to see how how things uh, were messed up or set up. Sounds good. We'll take a look. Soon. Thank you. I, I think you can just uh, um, start with a fresh. Uh, this one should, as long as you have Docker running, it should mostly uh, it should fix most of the situation. But I don't know. <laughs> some 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 weird error could happen. Yeah. Okay, um, so let's let's uh, go to the test case. Let's first uh, take a look at uh, um, the XML file that we're using. So I just opened it with Vim. So so uh, the uh, oops, something thing happened. So yeah, so so uh, this is a, a XM, user XML tailored for us to run uh, initial condition with uh, hydrodynamic simulations. So the key point here we use uh, today is uh, adding frontal initial condition. Uh, so we just use the default parameter all setting here. So we just need this uh, uh, line here to tell the framework to add the frontal module, which will provide us the initial energy density profile uh, for the hydrodynamic simulations. And uh, in the hydrodynamic hydro modules, we'll add the music, which is a real realistic hydrodynamic modules uh, that, uh, that we'll use. I think uh, uh, Monday, uh, you use uh, either brick or some uh, other uh, simplified uh, hydrodynamic modules in the, uh, ex uh, in the practice. But for, for the realistic, if you really want to run with a realistic hydro module, here's uh, you add in this way. And uh, uh, there's one required parameter, which is a freeze out temperature. You need to uh, set uh, to to the one to the value you want. Uh, here is a, a hundred and zero point one five GeV. This is a, a number in GeV. Uh, so if you don't set this value here, uh, default value will be minus one. So you'll get a warning when you run the simulation. I think uh, a few of you have uh, have noticed this problem. Of this warning in the uh, yesterday's uh, exercise. So that's the two um, uh, point of this uh, user tailored uh, uh, modules uh, XML file in order to run uh, music. So now once we have that, we can just uh, run. We can just type the dot slash run jescape with the uh, with this XML file. So we hit enter. Then the code will start run with the uh, with the Trento. So uh, if you run the code for the first time, the Trento will first uh, actually uh, pre-generate some uh, minimum bias uh, samples that will be helpful to, uh, to do centrally selections uh, from the initial state. So that's where you see these uh, event generations uh, uh, show up and it will generate 10,000 events. And then when, after that, you can just see that there's a bunch of output uh, from the hydro at every time steps trying to tell you that uh, the hydro is evolving and uh, the current time is just uh, indicated here. And at every time it also indicate, tells you that uh, in the median profile, the maximum energy density and temperature uh, in this, uh, in this at, at, uh, of the fluid cell. So this should run within a minute. So it will finish. Uh, so uh, what do you, if you run exactly the scripts as it is, so you should exactly see that uh, the lifetime of the of this event is uh, six point three Fermi over C, and uh, at that time all the flows are freezed, uh, are freezed out, or they run below this uh, switching energy density, and then and then that's all you need to, and all the simulation are done. So this will be uh, the end of the hydro simulations. So let me stop here. If uh, you have um, uh, you have succeed to to run this test run with this command, if you have done, you can indicate with a check mark on the in the chat.
So may I ask the chair how was the uh, situation? So we allow for more time. So people should now, sorry, I was a bit distracted because of some other issues here, okay. but I think, mm -hmm. so, so, so your question was if they are ready, right? So I see yeah, at so the moment whether they, if, if they successfully ran, uh, okay. I'll wait yeah, for so a little bit longer. It's like not that so much. It, really. it might take a, yeah, it might take a few, uh, few seconds to, to finish the run. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just a side remark that uh, so music also have emojis on the output. So you can see that uh, there's a music sign out, out here and this is a clock. So that's, uh, that's something amused that we add on as a developer for music so that uh, the text output has uh, emojis integrated. Try to be like uh, friendly <laughs> for the output. And also tells you the current uh, uh, memory usage uh, in the in the code. Yeah, okay, so this is um, what I was confused about. So we have also now a breakout room available for those who have technical issues. So if you are still experience mm -hmm. problems, maybe this is a way you can um, go in that extra room and then somebody can help you there. This is called technical support. And I think you could probably join yourself if you want to, or ask us to assign you to that room. If that's not possible. Maybe we try again. So who's ready with the running? Just do another check mark or hands up or some sign on the reactions button. So, okay, I see like seven, eight, ten, maybe on that order. One wants to move ahead faster. So, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> okay no, maybe this was it. just done. I don't know. I don't know. So, but I, 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 what I can guess, it's around 10 to 12 for are Okay. Uh, let's let, so let, let's let just me just, uh, move, let me just I think. move on. So, if, if, you, if you're still stuck, you can always come back to the, um, to the online notes um, so that uh, to see the command actually you need to put in and uh, the key things is all laid out here. <clears throat> so, uh, once we have finished uh, the hydro simulations, now it's the time to actually plot some key uh, variables uh, then to help us to build some intuition what actually does this hydro simulation like uh, means in, in these simulations. So here I, want, I will use the Jupyter notebook. So if you have uh, this uh, uh, minus P88, comma A8 options uh, uh, indicated in your Docker container, you can follow my uh, follow my instructions. So if you see any uh, errors, uh, don't be panicked. So we'll just uh, we'll also tell you a way to avoid Jupyter notebook uh, if you cannot figure out how to do it. So um, so to launch a Jupyter notebook inside the Docker, we'll use this command. Uh, it's highlighting this uh, note. So I just copy paste this command into my command line. So it will launch a Jupyter Notebook server uh, in the background. And uh, I want to basically uh, find uh, the website address by basically looking at the log file. So the one you want to use is the last line. This SGTP with this uh, 127.0.0.1, that means the local website you have. So basically I use this, uh, you just, you need to copy this, uh, um, this uh, website directory to your browser. We want to create a new tab and then just copy paste uh, um, the, <clears throat> the, the address here. So it will launch a Jupyter notebook. If you're familiar with Jupyter notebook, you should be seeing uh, something familiar. And if you are the first time using Jupyter notebook, this is the interface of the Jupyter notebook server. So what we will go is we go to these hydro sessions where our uh, scripts are all in there. So we'll click on the hydro session folder. And then uh, we will go to these scripts. You can immediately see that uh, this IPYMB is the Jupyter notebook. 
that uh, we uh, I pretty I pre write for you to actually uh, making some plots. And today we'll use uh, the one with test run. While doing test runs, and in the tomorrow sessions, we're using other uh, Jupyter notebook to do other purpose. And you also find that there's also same file name with the py here. So that's the corresponding Python script. So if you uh, you fail to uh, basically if you failed uh, to launch the Jupyter notebook, you can equally use this uh, run this uh, Python script in your command line to to generate the same plots. But for now, for the illustrative purpose, I just use Jupyter Notebook and walk you through. And then I will walk you through the Python script as well uh, in the next step. So the, the one thing, uh, the first uh, notebook we will launch together uh, today is this Hydro Evolve test run. So that will be the first uh, Jupyter Notebook you will launch uh, for today's exercise. So you just click on that notebook, you will launch this uh, profile. And then uh, basically uh, we'll execute uh, one by one through these uh, individual cells and then trying to, I will give you some physics interpretation about the figures generated from that. So the first uh, is just a, a kind of overall setup about the global properties of the Jupyter notebook and then the matplotlib with some style, uh, style definition. So you just do shift enter uh, on your keyboard to run this cell. And then once it runs, they just uh, give you this uh, one in here. And then you just uh, going through, you run the second cells and then the third cells. So the second cell is basically uh, identified where the test run results are. And then our reading two test files generated by, from the hydrodynamics. One is called momentum and exotropy, and the other called eccentricity evolutions. So that's the two files that we're first reading in this uh, notebook exercise. So first is we want to uh, plot, say the average temperature evolution as a function of the proper time in these uh, in these uh, evolutions. So the formula we use to calculate every temperature is written here. We use the local energy density as a weight, and then just calculate the weighted temperature average uh, in the simulations. And you can run this uh, these cells uh, to to actually generate the plots. So uh, if you are successful, if you successful ran the hydro and uh, uh, and the launch the Jupyter notebook, you should be able to uh, produce exactly this uh, figure that uh, the temperature starts in this event uh, close to 240 uh, MeV, and then just uh, gradually decrease, it decrease uh, faster in the early time, and then just uh, and then go 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 to a slowly uh, a, a flatter slope at a later time for this average temperature. So this is how basically a temperature, every temperature of the fireball looks like with these definitions uh, in the heavy ion collisions. Now in the simulation we just ran. Then we can just keep going on. We can, we can look at average velocities, at the radial velocity as a function tau, uh, how it develops as a function of time. So you see that in this event, we start with some early time at zero for every velocity. And in the hydrodynamic simulations, the velocity, every velocity keep growing uh, to about 0.6 uh, of, the, of the speed of light uh, at the late time. So this basically is uh, how the uh, velocity develops as a function of tau inside hydrodynamic simulations. And uh, further on, we can go to look at say uh, how the initial uh, eccentricity, the elliptic shape of the fireball changes as a function of time so the larger epsilon two is, the more elliptic the fireball is. So you can see that at early time, the fireball, uh, since this collision is a uh, off-center semi-peripheral collisions, uh, it has really large epsilon p, epsilon two, which uh, reaches about 0. 0.4 <coughs> uh, eccentricity, and it just uh, keep dropping, uh, keep drops as a function of tau. Uh, as a function of the evolution time um, to about 0.1 at the final freeze out. So at the last time step is still uh, out of the plane. So it's still elliptic uh, in the same directions, uh, but still the, the overall size will reduce from 0.4 to 0.1. And the last but not least is the so-called momentum anisotropy, which is uh, a quantity that uh, in the fluid cell directly related to the final state uh, 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 elliptic flow, 
So as you can see that the system's moment and isotropy initially was quite small, and then it actually grows uh, uh, linearly almost after two Fermi over C just grow linearly as a function of time. So this is uh, this, you see this small bump here, it's really because uh, we are calculating, we're plotting the magnitude uh, because the square root is always positive. So if we look at the phase, this usually means that uh, the, 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 the direction of the moment and isotropy uh, flip its directions initially will be negative and then goes positive if we keep into account the sign of epsilon p. But the magnitude it basically just flip the negative to the positive. That's why you see this a small bump here and then going to the, <clears throat> these directions. So that's the four figures that we will first look at as, a, as, a, as a four uh, figures to give you intuitions what the hydrodynamic, the hydrodynamics evolution does to the systems. It basically evolves system to lower temperatures. As you can see that every temperature drops as a function of time. Uh, the gradients of the pressures help you to build up flow velocities. So the V per, uh, so the average velocity increase and also it changes the shape. So the eccentricity drops as a function of time. And in the meantime that you develop the moment and isotropy, essentially the, uh, that uh, elliptic flow is a function of time here. So let me stop here if you uh, successfully run through this notebook. Uh, um, uh, and generate these four figures. So if you are unable to open the uh, Jupyter notebook, uh, you can uh, follow the, uh, the instructions here. Um, all right, you can follow the instruction here. Just go to, uh, go to the hydro session and then, uh, and, then, uh, and then just go to the hydro session folder and then run Python three, uh, the scripts. So uh, you can copy paste the second line here and run it. So it will not output anything, but uh, after that, you can see that you will have a uh, full PDF uh, generate uh, in this uh, local folder with a test run in front. So these are exactly the four uh, plots that has uh, been shown in this uh, Jupyter notebook. So let me stop here if you have uh, any questions or you have, um, uh, let me stop, yeah, just, just in case you haven't uh, done so. And if you have any question about physics interpretation, I'll also ask now. Yeah, so in case of questions, either you just speak up or raise your hand and then uh, if you, in case you're just ready, maybe we just try again to get an impression mm -hmm. by like, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. or maybe there's first a hand and then we'll, we'll go ahead with, mm -hmm. with that other. So there's a question by Isabel Kolbe. Yeah, hi, sorry, thank you. Um, I uh, am very slow with these things. So I managed to do all of this just by following the instructions, but I, it was so mm -hmm. fast, I am not sure that I've really understood what's just happened. So what mm -hmm. is it exactly that uh, was output by, so when we ran Jetscape, did it output mm -hmm. a, FMC file or what, and then how how no, was so, uh, generated? So, what we, what we yeah, so, so when when you run Jetscape, uh, what generates is this uh, intermediate file by the hydrodynamics. So this uh, eccentricity evolution file, and then the momentum and isotropy evolutions. So that's the two file we use uh, to make uh, figures here. So those are generated by the hydro modules as an intermediate uh, variables that usually uh, you want to use to check the evolutions look, making sure that they are looking good or something like that. So they are not uh, final observables that you can compare with experiments, but uh, some intuitive evolution quantities that you can look at during these simulations in the hydrodynamic phase to, to help you to get some intuitions. Okay, I see. So this, this, these dot .dat files contain something like a, all of this three plus one D information yeah. that is yes, created yes, by the hydro yes. and these mm -hmm. are very right. big files, I guess. Right. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of the not very detailed. It's kind of already computed. We just look at some uh, final ones as output. So to to reduce the size. So otherwise, the IO will be too much. Uh, we do output the evolution file that we will use in the, in the second step uh, that we'll, I will discuss in a, in a minute. So that we actually see the whole evolution look like. 
uh, in, the, in the second uh, script. Okay, and then sorry, I just have one more question. So now, um, mm -hmm. once these so these intermediate files, these are then used by Jetscape later on. Is that true? So or yeah, so Jetscape yes, yeah, so so. Yeah, so, so the JSCAP will use for example the surface file to convert the fluid cell into particles. That's on a different module. So that's kind of connected, but also uh, this file is, uh, is kind of output here as in the intermediate uh, step to, to basically uh, feed into the other module to do some other calculations. And the evolution file usually is also feeding uh, to the jet energy loss module to do energy loss calculations. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, maybe also one more comment from my yes. side because you mentioned this uh, HEPMC stuff. I mean, that, that would require you to have really particle degrees of freedom yet. And, and Hydro doesn't know about individual particles. I think, I mean, that's maybe important just conceptually yeah. that Hydro just yeah. knows about energy densities and maybe charge densities, but nothing else. It can't tell you that there was a pion flying around somewhere or so. So hydrogen okay, really is a, it's just has have, 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 have to, has just access to these macroscopic quantities. Okay, so the, we haven't gotten to this Cooper Fry particleization. Yeah, that, yet. that's that's tomorrow. <laughs> that's okay, tomorrow. good. Okay, good. so getting right. there eventually, but um, yeah. Okay, uh, so are there let more me questions? start the second scripts. Yeah, let me start the second scripts uh, for the time. And then, and then let let you have any questions uh, later on. Okay, then uh, we'll, we'll move ahead. Maybe maybe we can just have a quick uh, check again. Like maybe you can do a quick uh, green mm -hmm. thing if you're ready and you made it so far. Mm -hmm. And we'll just see how many are still with us. Um, so there are like yeah, again like around these ten or so that we had before. Mm -hmm. So sure. So the second script we will play around with uh, just uh, just for a few minutes is uh, this uh, hydro movie uh, test run. So that's kind of related to something that we want to make uh, more fancy plots uh, in the hydrodynamic uh, uh, evolutions. Those similar to those you have seen in the talk that I have been showing. So we can launch this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, um, Jupyter notebook, and the same thing you can just run through that every cell you do shift enter. Uh, shift plus enter to run execute all the cells. So uh, so first is uh, this time we'll basically we are reading a, a evolution file which is called this evolutional X Y A music, and this will actually when you're reading you'll tell you that uh, how many time steps you actually have in this uh, in this file. It tells you that it start with uh, tau equals 0.5 and uh, the maximum time evolution time is 6.2. And you have about 100, uh, uh, 0 0.1 uh, between four time steps. And then the dimensions in the x, y, and eta directions. So one thing you can do with this uh, evolution file, you can basically look at, uh, for example, temperature uh, distributions at early at initial time. So this is how our, uh, our profile we just ran look like in the transverse plane, how the temperature distributions is. You have a big hotspot and then maybe two small hotspots in the, in the bottom. And that's how this, uh, the, the initial profile look like for this particular event that we, we have run. And we can also look at uh, a, 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 a kind of plot over, of the transverse coordinates versus the evolution time. So you can see that uh, the, the fireball started hot in the, in the center and it's also cooler in the lower at, at the edge. And also as a function of time in the horizontal direction, you can see that the temperature drops gradually uh, from hot temperature to low temperature as the color scheme drops in this way. So these are kind of the color two dimensional contour plot you can make. And further than that, you can actually make um, animations uh, with this uh, similar uh, setup you can run this, uh, these cells to animate the temperature evolutions uh, for, the, for the whole median. So it takes uh, a few seconds, a few, uh, like one minute or two to generate uh, these uh, uh, this evolutions. Um, sorry, I don't know what happens. So in principle, it should uh, evolve. But anyway, so yes, it's uh, kind of, slow. Um, so uh, what you will do is basically generate a MP4 file in your local directory. So then you can actually play this MP4 file uh, in your 
uh, with with your with your uh, player editor. And there's a uh, and there's a last but not least there's a vector field. So there's a fan, you can even do more fancy uh, animations. So this animation is a little bit more slower than to generate compared to the previous one. So it has a 2D contour plot and also some vector fields, which is indicated by these arrows. So what uh, I want to plot here is uh, just uh, um, the, the contour is the, basically the temperature, the, the darker it is, the higher temperature it is. And then the arrow is the local flow velocity. So you can see not only the temperature information, but also see the local expansion of the flow field in this part. So uh, you can run this, it take a while to finish, uh, but uh, uh, it will eventually finish. Uh, so <laughs> uh, so uh, it depends on how fast your computer is, it take uh, maybe a few minutes. So don't run with a too uh, uh, very fine resolution. You can also increase this and skip to a bigger number to make the generation faster with a lower resolution. But uh, this is uh, the script you can play with. So let me just end up here. So these are just the Jupyter Notebook. You can play around with these different cells. You don't need to modify anything. Just uh, today, just uh, hit enter and then you can see how things look like to get some intuitions. And similarly, uh, if you don't have the uh, Jupyter Notebook running, you can also just run the same Python script on the, in the command line. And it will also generate the same movies as well as the 2D control plot as well just using direct pythons so yeah let me stop here today here and uh, if you have questions we can we can, uh, we can i can answer any questions you have maybe let me uh, rephrase one of the questions that we had on the slack channel um there was a question how you set or where where did you set the energy and the beams for this particular run here for the hydro uh -huh. because i so, could imagine that also yes. people would be mm -hmm. curious to try a different beam combination at a yes. different energy yes. or so yes. so maybe yes. that could be an interesting application yes. as well so yeah. I bet so, so today right so today we are basically just do a test run without any settings uh so if you look at the uh, um the tomorrow sessions will go through exactly one of that, which is the collision system uh, comparison. So this will be, for example, if you want to run GoGo 200, so if you look at this XML, it will tell you how to set up the simulations with uh, GoGo 200 GV with these uh, parameters. So that's basically in these uh, Trento sessions, we need to specify the, uh, the type of collision projectile and target, the collision energies, cross sections, and some normalizations you need to put in associated with the collision energy. You so can also put in the centrality beam and then to, to, to select centralities. So how was it set yeah. today? Can you repeat what, 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 what oh, you did? Today was just a default. So it's, it's basically, uh, we didn't default? set anything. Uh, it was uh, in this, um, if you want to really find out what has actually ran, uh, you can go to the uh, config, to the master script that uh, James talked about, the master one, then you can go to Trento session to find, yeah, go to Trento session to find what actually is run. So we basically ran this configuration uh, in today's example with the lead lead at 2.76 uh, for 50 to 60% centrality. Okay, thank so you. That, that that's what be, we ran today. That yes. might have been for and, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, people. yeah, and tomorrow we'll talk more details on how you change these numbers, and then you can uh, have any freedom to change to your favorite, uh, to favorite your collision system you like to do. So there was a question by Jessica Churchill, but it just disappeared now. Do you still want to ask your question? Um, well, I just sort of wanted to go to the breakout room. I can't get this code to work. Ah, sorry. Yeah, this was a bit mixed information. So you okay? So I can put you in the. Should I put you in the breakout room, or do you wanna? Um, um, it doesn't matter. I can just look at Slack. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Never Good. Mind. Then um, and then Abhijit. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up that picture of the uh, the movie again, the one that you had just shown. I mean this one? Oh, which one? Uh, oh, you want a two-dimensional count? No, no, no. The one before. Yeah, with the arrows. Now, just, just hold it for okay. a second. Yeah, stop scrolling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Okay. No, I'm just trying to take a picture. That's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I have another um, uh, point maybe concerning animations before we move on to Dima. Um, because there was actually the question on your presentation, you had a couple of animations shown and mm -hmm. people were wondering how they can replay those. I mean, is there, can you provide oh, okay. uh, on the slides or yeah, so, so people can, can get it from a web page yeah. or I don't know. I mean, some, I, I, some, I, some of them, numbers. some of them are on the YouTube. So you, if you see there's a YouTube link, uh, in the, in the slides, <clears throat> you can click on the link. Uh, some of them I haven't uploaded, but I can upload them to YouTube as well. So that I can update the uh, the slides, a PDF, and you can get the link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're they they're not directly play playable from the PDF because some people tried yeah, that yeah. and mm -hmm. yes yes. Um. So so just use the links and for those that are mm -hmm. available and yeah. there will be an updated version then I think in the next few days probably and then mm -hmm. you yeah. can play the videos again. Good. Mm -hmm. I think then um, we have a few minutes to five. So shall we do like a, I don't know, three minute technical break for <laughs> whoever needs it. I think it's- Yeah, whoever wants to break, yeah. you can break. Uh, whoever wants to want- uh, some Yeah, if, if somebody still has questions to show you, we're here. <laughs> yeah. um, but let's start with Dima. I, I would say like, let's say two minutes past so that we really have a five minute mm -hmm. break yeah. at this point. And uh, I will stop recording now and then we can can we start and when Dima starts? Thank you.